Uh -huh. Thank you so much, uh, student. We get to our lesson two. We are doing very, very well. You can see we are, st uh, we are getting into the steps of how we are going to manage this school of ours. Uh, and we are doing well. Remember we have talked about that we needed to look at the supervision and this is what I want to pay attention to. And you know the word super, everybody says, ah, oh, how is it super, super? And then you can see the other one is vision, vision. So and when we talk about supervision, we are simply talking about is super attention, su super attention. Be there, see, over, see what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, and you, you know when we talk about uh, just overseeing, we also mean that uh, to watch over. You, you, you know, you are, you, you are directing, you know, you direct, you oversee what is going on. Because sometimes, just like the way we have talked about those theories, about theory X and theory Y, you can see especially where uh, most of your, uh, you know, most, most of your colleagues and most of the workers uh, that you are working with, they are in the theory X. If you don't supervise, then nothing goes on. Uh, sometimes you may even, you know, th sometimes even the th whether the, the, the teachers are even using the textbooks that have been bought by the government, get to know what is happening in those classes. Uh, I, I don't know, but, but again, I know some of us, we have a lot of work in our offices, but we have been told about the um, uh, management by moving around. Move around, ask questions, be friendly to the students, be friendly to everybody, and you'll get to know what is going on. Otherwise, as I said, if you remain in your office, uh, then you are preparing yourself for a lot of trouble. Uh, I told one of uh, my good uh, friend uh, that sometimes also be one of those uh, uh, managers, uh, especially if you are a principal who also has uh, some subjects that he teaches in class. Once you interact, there's always this nice thing when we interact with our students in class. We, we, there's a bond that comes in, and once they trust you, once they trust you, then uh, what happens is that you are going to get to know who comes to class, who does not come to class, uh, in which subjects they don't have books, in which, you know, all oh, that happens. Who is this uh, cook who did not even wash the sufria, you know, because he was tired and he did not want to work. So it is important for us to do that. Ah, I don't want to go through the brief history of supervision. I believe this one is something you can do, uh, and therefore we don't have to get there. The most important thing is that let's look at the effective supervision in schools and guiding principles, and we are saying that number one, supervision should be planned. You, you, you know, you have to know when are you going to do when, what? When are you going to do what? But then is, it, is there a problem when you do the impromptu uh, supervision? No problem. But what we are saying is that supervision should be planned. You should know when are you going to do what? When are you going to sit uh, behind a class uh, be, uh, yeah, at the back of the class, not the behind of the, <laughs> the back of the class and see how your teachers are teaching? It's important for you to do that. Uh, supervision should be carried out by professionals. Uh, I have seen uh, uh, sometimes where you find that this supervision has just been done by anybody. Uh, these managers, you guys, you are good, but again, you, 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 you know, you project or you know, you know, you give your work. You give your work to people who are not very uh, well, well, quite uh, professionals in this, and then you find that maybe a lecturer is teaching like I am doing. Then you find somebody walks in and says, hi, madam, I wanted to make an announcement. And then you ask, who, said, who sent you at this time? It's time that you should be making this announcement, surely. And then he said, no, no, I am the prefect, and therefore I have to do this. Let's be careful. I don't mean that prefects are not, or, you know, are not professionals, but let's look at how far they can take up this. Supervision should aim at improving human needs. Uh, it is not... Um, you know, and this is what I say, when you are doing the supervision kindly, uh, you know, it's not fault finding. It's not fault finding. It's not an inspection. You are not going to, fo to look for faults. You are going to m look at where are my areas of weaknesses? What do I need to address? so that you can help me to become better. But you're not coming to tell me you can't do this, you can't do this. So supervision should be aimed at improving improving uh, the performance of human beings. Then supervision should provide an atmosphere of acceptance, support, and understanding. And with this, I always say, once you involve us and you let us know that you'll be doing supervision, and this is what you'll be interested in, and then you let us know that you are not doing this uh, so that you can prove to everybody that we are not working. You want us to work better with you. Then, of course, you find that even if you tell me that you're going to sit at the back of my class, uh, then it will be fine. But if I just know that you're coming to to see you are a fault finder, then people are made to resist. 
uh, supervision should be carried out in cooperat uh, cooperative and democratic manner. We have talked about that. Adoptive, and we have said and defined to the needs. We have talked about that. You know, help to, you know, assess your changes, what you need to change, whether you come and you tell me, okay, fine, what you need to address. You need to address how you may maybe the instructional materials you use. You need to address on your first projection. You need to address on how you interact with the students. Then it becomes better. And then, of course, uh, uh, there should be good monitoring. Let's look at the functions of uh, supervision. The overseeing function. There is the overseeing function. And we are saying that this function includes directing, controlling, reporting, and commanding. And we have already talked about it, that you have to uh, be able to, to direct people, to help them, to control the far they can go. You know, help them in reporting, help them in giving directions also. And we are saying that you have, as you, you, the person who is supervising, you have to understand the goals and the mission and the vision of your institution for you to be able to do this. Then a helping function, as I have said, to support, to guide uh, and assist teachers. And especially when they are new, uh, it is so important that you help everybody. And not only when they are new, even when you want them to grow professionally. I remember one of the principals, she's, he's still my good friend. He would say, no, I cannot be in the job group I am in and my, st uh, my teachers are still stagnating. And actually when you could be invited for a, t a TSE interview, he would sit with you and take you through that. And that is something that is very, very important. Types of supervision, we have the general ones that everything is uh, uh, taken care of. Uh, you find that they take every, you know, they, you know that this supervision is done for every other bit, every other bit or every other activity and the programs that happen in the school. We have instructional supervision or what we call clinical uh, supervision. This is like the ones that we do for teaching practice when we call it clinical. You go to, into a class and help this teacher maybe to, uh, to help uh, in teaching, in, in uh, improving of teaching and learning. Then, of course, we don't have to go through this again uh, because when we think about the aims of instruction or supervision, we are thinking about uh, that it can help in growth. We are th thinking about it can be a motivation. It can also help in communication skills. It can help teachers to solve their own problems. It can also improve interpersonal uh, relationship uh, and all that, and creating even good environment in schools. Uh, so these are those we can look into. We have categories of evaluation. We can look at the categories of evaluation. Uh, and we are talking here that we, ca we have what we call uh, formative evaluation. Of course, that one we talk about, it's in the initial uh, phase of the program because we are forming formative. Then, of course, uh, here we can do it through progress tests. We can do them through uh, the end of term exams. But again, we also have what we call summative. And we know, for example, sum summative is a form of evaluation that comes at the end of the final stage of a program, for example, or a project. For example, what we have just had KCP and KCSC. A progressive evaluation, this one goes on, you know, it's uh, found in both formative and summative. The word progressive actually tells us about it, that, and you know, when it goes, you know, it's a, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing. Uh, and we are saying that actually this one, it can be done through using again examination results. Uh, we can do through curriculum uh, documents in use, the curriculum materials used, you know, all these. And sometimes I always say that when you're also doing this evaluation, uh, is it important that you know it's only that not it's not only the students that you're evaluating also think about the uh, uh, the students uh, the teachers as well and there's so much that we can do as teachers self evaluation you can do self evaluation at the end of the lesson ask yourself have I killed the students or have I work, worked with the students because sometimes I hear teachers talk about oh I had a double my friend I have done that double but at the end of the day actually what you did is that you are just alone you are just alone you left the students a very long time ago. Then evaluation by administration is also good when we are evaluating teachers. Listen to what they tell you because in most cases we cannot also evaluate ourselves very effectively. When we think that we have done so well, there are still areas to be uh, corrected. Uh -huh. Then, of course, um, we, we move on to instructional evaluation. And I like about instructional evaluation, although I have already talked about them. When we think about uh, instructional evaluation, are we giving varied examination? Are we varying, giving varied grades? Are we informing the parents what is going on? You know, and this is important for us. Uh, we move on to the next chapter. Uh, uh, we are moving fast and the reason why we are doing this is that we have all these materials with us and I know we'll be able to uh, understand this is just a kind of a, uh, just a, a foundation 
just to help you understand what we are covering. Theories of motivation, as I said, who doesn't like to be motivated? I always ask these questions to my students. The first question I ask them, actually, especially when we are looking at the fundamentals of pedagogy, I believe most of you, uh, you know this. I ask them, can you remember any good teacher that you have ever come across? Uh, and uh, then they, oh, oh, yeah, they lift up their hands and they are, I still remember my English teacher. When was this teacher teaching you? I was in class two. And how many years are those? One of my, I can tell you, like 50 years. What happened then? Oh, that teacher was so good to tell us. Well done. Would even encourage us. So motivation is about everybody. Who doesn't like being told that they are doing well? So we move on to the first one, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I don't even need to. I know everywhere I have asked about this Maslow's hierarchy of needs in which way I think uh, this is the guy who is so loved by many uh, I have never been frustrated I always find it uh, and you can see that he has these levels he came up with the levels uh, physiological safety uh, then we have the love and belonging esteem and self-actualization and what it is is that physiological is that if you don't have the basic food uh, if you don't have food clothing, and shelter why would I, I even be looking for safety and we even we, have, we even walk around and see where there is no food there is no nothing there is no even fence the same case with even with our students if they are hungry my friend why are we even telling them that they should be safe when they don't even have anything to keep safe for but again when they have this then what happens is that now they can get to the next level of the need and that is safety and once they feel safe both physically and psychologically both you know and that's what I say then they can be able to develop love when you know you are safe Nobody is coming to embarrass you in class. Nobody is coming. This teacher is so good. Nobody is coming to harass you in any way. Home is good. Then you develop love. But when you are this teacher who harasses everybody, you, you are even hitting the board when it has done nothing, then your kids can never love you. Then after love, the self-esteem comes in. Of course, when we are loved, we develop self-esteem. We feel good about ourselves. And when you feel good about yourself, then self-actualization. You can go anywhere, anywhere when your self-esteem is right. Uh, then, uh, that's what I've just discussed. Application, of course, I have just, I think I've just discussed this. Uh, and maybe if I can just say one more thing about physiological, that's why you find you, as, a, as a manager, think about how you can meet these needs all the way up uh, in your school, and that can be helpful. Uh, then two factors, theory. This one I don't want to talk about it a lot, that, but it is also called the hygiene theories. That we get motivated either by the job in, uh, internally or externally by the job itself, uh, you know, or by the environment, you know. But in short, it just talks about that we have two kind of motivators. There is what satisfies and what dissatisfies, and what motiv uh, motivi uh, uh, you know, what. Uh, Satisfies is not the opposite of what dissatisfies, or rather, what is intrinsic is not the opposite of uh, extrinsic. And here we have, for example, when we talk about company policy, okay, these are uh, extrinsic supervision and relationship, work conditions, salary, security, those are extrinsic. They, they, you know, they can satisfy you. But again, what can dissatisfy you is if you remain in a one place and there's no achievement. You don't see any achievement. No recognition. You work so hard. Nobody recognizes you. It is, you don't have the interest of the work you do. There's no responsibility, increased responsibility. There's no advancement. You join a, a place of work in whichever grade you remain there for many years. Regardless of the salary that you have been given, that is a place that you feel you don't want to be in. And that's why we are saying we have the hygiene and the motivators and therefore as uh, as um, uh, as managers it's good that we balance these things let people be recognized uh, understand what they are bringing on board and respect what they have brought okay uh, also give them responsibilities also advance them let them see that they don't remain in job they don't uh, vegetate in job group l let them move up help them to move up and then of course these other things will make sense uh-huh uh, uh, acquired needs theory, uh, this one just talks about, it's about Mark uh, Clellard, and he just talked about need for achievement, uh, need for affiliation, and the need for power. 
three things only that everybody wants the need for achievement you need to see that you are achieving in what you are doing you don't want people you know and this is the question that people keep on asking wherever you go hey by the way sasa umefikisha wapi now who are you these days uh, and you are and you are embarrassed to say that uh, how, where you, you left me 10 years ago that's why i'm sitting need of affiliation we need we are social beings as i said and we need to feel affiliated and the need for power so those are things that we need to pay attention to equity the already relate people the same way uh, treat people the same way uh, and this one makes me very happy uh, that sometimes when you get yourself employed and you are given maybe you have been looking for a job you have been looking for a job for many years then you are given 30000 you are so happy you are so happy and you are working so hard wait until you know the person you you are in the same office who is not even working as hard as you are is getting 90000 all of a sudden you are demotivated and therefore that's what we are talking about please make sure that you uh, you, you you are careful uh, the enforcement i don't think i want to go through that and then now we go to almost our very uh, uh, last one i think that one is also the kind of things that i have just been talking about so we don't have to have worried so much let's look at the school and um, uh, school Uh, we look at the school and stu uh, student governor, uh, governments and we are saying that these are also very very important as you are able to come up with this uh, school government because these guys can help you in doing so much these are the people who will tell you what is happening they can organize their own uh, functions they can be able to report to you they can manage their classes but again what i always say as much as we have them it is good to tell them how far they can go so that again we don't have a problem of where again they think they are they are lecturers like you or they are teachers like you and they take over what you're supposed to do but actually what happens is that sometimes uh, and, and this is for true that when you you are relating with your own you know a person who you are at the par you 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 are comfortable to express how you feel and therefore they can you know when we think about this prefect they can serve as a good example they can provide an open forum they can organize events as i have said they can be of service they can do fundraising and actually they also feel involved so it is important that you have this uh, this uh, prefect body in your school and actually the student we feel it will even when you make major decision like changing the meals because that is what actually affects them a lot even when you are changing the meals you can involve them and then they can tell you what needs to be done co curricular activities they are very very important and i don't have to go through all this because uh, actually these are things that we know uh, and you have seen that we are gifted differently there are those students who just come to school so that they can p participate in games and i am happy with the cbc now this has been given quite Uh, you, you, you know quite quite acknowledgement it has been given its space uh, uh, because some students you know they they just thrive in this uh, and it is so important because also those kids are growing up if you don't involve them in co curricular activities then all the energy will be set against you so uh, so uh, as we uh, wind up uh, it is important that we understand that uh, Uh, there are reasons for supporting the position conducted by the program for activities which could include physical exercise these guys are able to do the exercises relaxation and recreation which is also good emotional expression social training uh, personal development the democracy you can also be able to do this guidance and counseling moral teaching you know uh, and these are very very important for us Therefore as we think about this it's important that we think about uh when we think about the co-curricular activities their objectives what is the objective remember we have said you are also not going out there and you have no objective of anything you have to have also the objective of why you have the co-curricular activities and we are talking for example to prepare uh, people for citizenship in a democ uh, in a democracy when they are involved in co-curricular activities uh, we find there is so much that goes out there imagine of a football match or whatever, Bias, they have to run the rules so that they can be democratic enough to promote a better attitude towards the school of course that's what we have said that if you just keep these kids there i know for now they are just out there because of covid they are not supposed to participate in games because of many issues but again we hope we'll get back there and that is why we are also saying now that they are not able even to participate it is your turn to think uh, to talk to them and see how are they are feeling how is their how are they responding when it comes to our covid issues to develop independence and initiative responsibility and leadership also to assist in guidance activities to ensure 
too large participation of these students of ours. And then we are saying there are many forms. There are many forms. I cannot even talk about them here. This is just a list that I have said that we can actually use. But we know there are so many other forms that we have. Debating, talk about debating, talk about music, talk about social activity, talk about uh, all this. Uh, I think we have already talked about the principles of co-curricular activities, uh, and I don't think that we need to be worried about this. But one of the things is I always say that they should be supervised. Always remember they should be supervised. They should be approved. Make sure they are approved. They should also take care of the moral issues. Okay, whatever you're asking them to do, it should be worth their time. Uh, there should be somebody who is responsible of what they are doing, a teacher of the administration. And actually, uh, as we have said, uh, we, we should know the enrollment in those groups. Okay. Uh, then uh, the next thing uh, that I would like us to discuss is the students' benefit out of this. Uh, and I, have, I think I have already talked about quite a number of them that we have talked about that develop the right kind of attitudes. We have talked about to enhance leadership skills and abilities. We have talked about the management of stress as well. We have talked about also the team playing. We have talked about the developing groups uh, skills and improvement of creativity. Uh, therefore, there are some questions for you uh, that you need to pay attention to. As I said, uh, we'll be meeting uh, actually online quite a lot. And now you can quickly say that you have a way on where you can start. Ours now will be more of discussions that we, uh, like we always do uh, and just to understand more. But that one was uh, just a layout, a layout of how this course is likely to be. I believe now it will not feel empty. You have somewhere and the notes will make sense. Thank you very much, my dear students. Uh, that will be the end of our presentation, and I believe this is very, very helpful. Thank you.